What's up guys? So I've got a couple comments from you guys saying, you know, you guys want to see my practice schedule, what I do for practice, what's a what's a regular day my practice look like. It kind of sounds to me that you guys are looking for like a, a set structured schedule, like a checklist that I try to check off every single day. It's not like that. Um, I don't know, you guys might be surprised a pro golfer doesn't have this structured day uh, for his practice, but I've just never really done that. I've just tried to assess my game as honest as I can and just try to get better every single day. But uh, I just want to kind of take you guys through my practice, I guess. It's kind of a, a normal day in my practice. With that being said, let's go ahead over to Glen Eagles. So I'm just gonna do this by doing a little voiceover uh, with what I'm doing. Got the Dave Pell's putting tutor in my hand there. Like I said, I use that almost almost every single day. I basically I'm trying I'm just trying to make sure I get the ball started online and at least take out some kind of variables uh, when I'm putting. So obviously, like I said in the previous video, there's three parts of putting, but after taking the lesson now, it, it's technically I guess four parts of putting. You gotta aim it right. You gotta start the ball online, but you gotta read the putt right, and then you gotta put good speed on it, right? So I'm just trying to take away some variables here. Just make sure I'm starting the ball right where I'm looking. Like you can tell, I'm, I'm a little bit tedious with how I set this thing up because I really want to make sure that this is starting where I'm looking, especially on these bent grass greens, just cause they're a little softer. And so the ball can kind of, once it starts rolling on that track, you know, 10 times or so, it's gonna start leaving a mark in the ground. And it's just super easy to make putts over and over again, just because, well, the, the ball has made an imprint on the grass. So um, I don't have a towel underneath my feet right now, but I will be doing it here in a little bit in the video. But um, if you guys are gonna do drills like this, you should be putting a towel down on the ground, especially on bed grass greens. You're staying in one spot for a really long time. It's gonna ruin the greens. But here, I'm just getting some repetition work down here. Um, I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit in this video, but getting some repetition work, just making sure I'm starting the ball online. Skip forward here a little bit. Then um, I'll just kind of drop a couple balls every once in a while, even you know while I'm doing the whole repetition work. And uh, I guess all I'm thinking about here is just trying to make sure I'm going through my routine, just practicing my routine, making sure I get everything down uh, physically and mentally, all the things I'm thinking about through the whole process. And um, yep, Drano. Um, and I don't like to really stay in one spot very long um, when I'm kind of throwing some balls around. Uh, one thing I've been really trying to focus on these days is speed on my putting. I think I haven't been focusing on that enough throughout my career, and so that's probably one of the big parts of my putting that I can really, really improve on. So I've been really focusing on that. Skip forward here a little bit. You can see here I'm, you know, going through my whole routine. I'm going back and reading the line, just doing the same thing on the putting green like I would on the golf course. So yeah, here I went back and got a towel to put under my feet here, because again, if you're standing in one spot for a long time, you're gonna start ruining the greens. And um, if you're gonna do drills like this where you're standing in one spot, um, you really need to put a towel down. So getting a little bit more repetition work done here. And and also, before I go further in this video, I just want to, like, I hate putting in my thumbnails and titles, pro golfer here, or pro golfer that, like, I don't actually care about that. It's more just for damn YouTube purposes, like SEO purposes. You guys don't know what SEO is, but basically it's just how the videos can get found. So it makes me cringe every time I do it. I'm not wanting to do it. I just know that that's just part of YouTube. So seriously, it makes me cringe every time I do it. But anyways. And then here I'm just kind of showing a little bit these these putts right here with these three balls I'm trying to make the ball barely die past the front lip of the hole. So just barely get it to the hole, right? And then these next three putts here I'm trying to kind of not really hit the back of the cup, but almost you know Like I don't want it to be dying in but kind of in that mid-range, right? And then fast forward to the last three I'm just trying to bang it in the back which I don't really that that's not really all that important I mean how often are you really banging in the back from nine eight feet ten feet so um, that part doesn't really matter all that much but that that kind of helps you get a feel a, a more sensitive feel to speed for uh, putting here so I mean yeah I'd pretty much do that for 
I don't know, however long I feel like I need to do it, depending on if I'm punting bad or, or whatever. But from there, we're going to go over to the range and tell you what I'm doing on the range here. So I start out just kind of chipping some, not really even really thinking much. I'm just chipping. I just kind of get my body loose, get a club in my hands and just kind of flip around some wedges. Back when I was a kid, actually, I would legit start out practicing, you know, my 60, 70, 80, 90, 110, 120, 130 wedge shots every single time I got into the range. And that, when I started doing that, that was probably the quickest improvement period, I guess. Like, I improved really, really quickly when I started doing that, when I started really focusing on my wedge shots and getting down those distance increments, right? And just trying to get as sensitive as I could to 60 yards feel significantly different than a 70 yard, 70 yard feel significantly different than 80 yard. And once you can kind of get to that point, it's like, you're gonna, you're gonna start getting really good because your wedge game i'm a real strong proponent to having a strong wedge game like that's huge so so i hit some wedge shots and then um i always put down an alignment stick i don't care if i'm practicing for five minutes ten minutes it doesn't matter i, I put down an alignment stick every single time you know setup's not really something that really changes that much with me uh, i don't i don't know if that's something weird or, or not but my setup doesn't really change that much but my alignment or everyone's alignment i feel like i think everyone's alignment over time is going to change a little bit so i always put an alignment stick down and make sure it's parallel left here I'm kind of getting in the way, but just trying to make sure I'm lined up right here. And I really make sure that I'm lined up right when I'm lining these up. Just like with the Dave Pell's putting tutor, I make sure I'm just really, I put a little bit more time into making sure it's lined up correctly. Because if I do it once right, I don't have to really mess with it for the rest of the practice session. And so yeah, I just, um, just warming up my hands still, warming up my body. Uh, not really full swinging it. Now once I get pretty warmed up, I'm going over to my bag and grabbing my tripod that I talked about in the what's in the bag video. It's a little tripod that fits in my bag, it's retractable, legs kind of pull out like that and i um, setting that up, you know, right on line with my feet. Again, I might be the weird one, but I look at my swing a lot. I know a lot of people that don't look at their swing, it's everyone's a little different, right? I'm someone that likes to understand what's going on in my swing and I need to visually see it and that's just how I've always been. Some guys never really look at their swing, so it's not really something that need, they need to start doing if you've <laughs> never done. It. but you know maybe if you're not playing well then maybe you should kind of try it out uh, get one of these little tripods stick your phone right in there and start recording your swing and kind of keep chipping away at the um, at what your swing mechanics like need to look like and you know you can do that by taking lessons or whatever it may be but in my swing program it has everything that I'm looking for in my swing and pretty much anyone else's swing that you need to have if you want to be a good ball striker like it's just you just need to have these things and if you don't see it I tell you how to fix it and you know you don't necessarily need to have the program but you know my swing program is just something that I've put together just all the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years about the golf swing and working with these really expensive golf instructors everything in one spot so if you want more information about that click the I in the top right corner or there'll be a link down in the description but here um, just looking at my swing here I think this is me coming off of uh, about a week and a half, week, two weeks of break. I've been shoving my face trying to finish this little project I've been doing. But while I'm looking at my swing here a little bit, I just want to say some people might be surprised that I'm spending a little bit of time here on the range, spending some time on the punting green doing, you know, kind of mechanical things. And I just don't think that you need to be completely one side of just playing competitive games only or games with yourself only. You need to have an aspect in your practice where there's some repetition work, right? I was, I was saying that earlier repetition work so the way i think of that is is you're making your machine better your swing the way i see it is your swing is a shotgun so the, the tighter you can make that shotgun blast like the shotgun pattern the tighter you can make your shot dispersion the better you're going to be right so either you clean up your really bad shots or you make your decent shots a little bit tighter whatever that may be you're making your machine better right but you can't just have a good machine and not know any scenarios or, or be situationally experienced either you know like it doesn't make any sense for a navy seal to be trained for any kind of situation when they have a shitty gun that can't shoot anything right it can shoot like completely sideways it doesn't matter if you're trained for the situation if you have a bad machine but also if you have a great machine but you don't know how to use it in different situations and scenarios 
then having a good machine doesn't really matter either. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, you can't just have a really good swing and not know any course management. And you can't just have good course management and competitive practice and practice games and all that when you don't have a good swing, right? You need to have both. You need to have some repetition work to work on your machine, so to speak, your gun. And then you got to go on the course and play competitive games and get yourself prepared for pressure situations and, and competing, right? And so that's why I'm looking at my swing here. I look at my swing a lot just because I don't want it to get too far off track and I want to be seeing the things that I want to be seeing because if as long as I have the swing where about where I want it, you know, my machine's old up pretty good. Like it's going to be performing pretty well. So I'm just making sure I like what I'm seeing here. And, and so I'm not like constantly recording my swing. So I'll, I'll record my swing, kind of see what's going on and, and try a couple things out to see if I can fix it. And then once I kind of feel like, oh, that kind of felt good, then I'll get my phone out and see what that actually looked like you know so what you feel and what's actually real is not necessarily the same thing every time right so i'm just trying to make sure uh what's what i feel is about what i think is going on with my swing okay so i'm just kind of going back to my swing here and just uh just making sure is what I'm trying to feel with my hands producing the results that I'm wanting to see in my real swing. Because, you know, if I'm trying to feel what I should be seeing in my swing, then what I want to see in my swing is going to never happen. I need to, personally, I need to exaggerate those feelings or else that process just takes forever and might not even ever happen. So it's all about having the right mental cue. You have to exaggerate the feeling in your practice to make what you want to see in your swing to happen. But uh, yeah, just looking at my swing again. <laughs> yeah, I guess I like what I'm seeing here. But um, yeah, usually I would kind of go into my long irons, but I'm just gonna skip over to my three wood. Uh, with woods though, one thing I wanna say is you need to realign the alignment stick with woods because you're so far away from that line. Now you're you're most likely gonna be aiming right because that you're, you're farther away from the line than you were with iron. So again, just kind of realign yourself with the three woods with the driver because where you're lined up does change a little bit pretty much just doing the same thing like i said i'm just just working on the machine making the machine as good as i can get it um you know when i was when i was a kid i was a big range rat right i was i was really heavily one-sided on the making sure my machine was as good as i can make it and i wasn't very situationally aware or, or you know good with working with scenarios and so you know i'd be doing a lot of stupid things on the golf course but i kind of got away with it because my swing mechanically was so good and i can get away with certain things but you know i was definitely handy Handicapped. I didn't know what I was doing on the golf course. I was I was just a ball striker that didn't really know how to aim the gun basically. So like I said, you, you gotta have both. And sometimes here, so here what I'm doing is is going through my routine here and, and with my wood sometimes, especially like before tournaments, if I've played the course before or something, I will try to imagine and visualize certain tee shots that I remember and kind of go through the course remembering the tee shots and making little fairway boundaries for myself. So you know, here I'm just visualizing the fairway, what what it's doing, what kind of shots shape I want here you know all that stuff and I'm just kind of going through it on the on the range kind of getting some tournament prep work here I stopped hitting drivers because I noticed on this last one here, I, I um, flew this over the range and I think it was getting on the other side of the range here and almost kind of hit some people. So um, shortly after this drive also, I don't know if you could tell in the earlier videos, but it was about to rain and um, they just blew the horn. There was some thunder going on in the area. So they blew the horn. So I had to cut practice short, unfortunately. I wanted to kind of show you guys what I'm doing for short game, but I don't really have the time to do all the editing and all that for now. So I'm gonna cut this one short. Maybe I'll show you guys what I'm doing for short game here in a little bit, but that's what I'm doing kind of for practice. Uh, I'll make a probably a sequel <laughs> to this video, I guess, here in a little bit. But that's it for me today, guys. If you've liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It actually really helps me out when you guys do that. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Ha, just kidding. So I finally finished the course management program 
And just like I promised you guys, you guys are gonna get the free version where I go over every single thing that I'm thinking about on the golf course. And these are the things that I've learned from my coach and in college golf. And before that, I can genuinely say that I didn't have a clue as to how to play golf. All I knew was how to swing a golf club. And so this video is long enough. So if you want more information, click the I in the top right corner or there'll be a link down in the description. And if you sneakies skip to the back of this video and didn't watch the rest of the video, Go back and watch the rest of the video. Okay, for real this time. See ya.